Hey guys, welcome back to my channel SAP with IK. Hope you're all doing good. Today in this video, we'll discuss on the end-to-end -end process of the production execution. So the complete end-to-end -end process of a production cycle, it basically starts with the creation of a demand and ends with the technically completion of the production order or the process order. So the first step is basically to create a demand since we are uh, planning to go with uh, the MRP. So if MRP is not needed, you can actually uh, skip all the, the steps and directly go to the creation of the production orders. So since it uh, also talks about the uh, planned orders created through MRP, so let's start with the demand creation. So once the demand has been created and the demand can be a sales order, it, it can be a safety stock, or it can be a plan independent requirement or the forecast based planning uh, on that particular finished product. So once the demand has been created, the next step is basically to run MRP. So during the MRP system is going to evaluate uh, the existing stock levels for the uh, particular finished product versus the total requirement quantity. So if there is a shortage, MRP is going to create planned orders for the in-house manufactured items. And in the process of the MRP, it will also create purchase requisitions uh, for the raw materials, I mean, which are basically part of the bill of uh, material. So it, it again checks the stock statistics for those raw materials and accordingly the proposals will be created at down the level. So once the planned order has been created, uh, this is for the finished product. So we convert the planned orders into the production order or the process orders. So now the creation of uh, the production order or the process order, it basically depends on the scenario we are following. So let's say if we are in the discrete manufacturing process, then we go with the production orders. But in case we are in the process related, I mean to say the pharma industry or a food based industry. So then we typically use the process order scenarios. So let's talk about production orders for now. Once the production order has been created, the next step is basically to release the production order. So now what is the uh, purpose of releasing the production order? So can't we go directly to the goods issue and the subsequent steps? So why, why should we release the production order? So the release process in the production order is basically to confirm that the operations that are defined in the production order, which are uh, directly coming from the routing of the finished product and the components uh, from the bill of material have been checked thoroughly by the uh, production supervisor. So now he has to give a green light saying that all the components and the operations are correct and now you can go ahead with the production execution or start manufacturing the product in the shop floor. So only once the production order has been released, then the subsequent functions like the goods issue or the confirmation and the goods receipt will be allowed in the production order. So after the release has been carried out, the next step is basically to consume the raw materials or the components from the uh, storage locations, right? So these components will be picked from the storage location and will be moved on to the shop floor location where the actual activities takes place. So when we talk about activities, there are two uh, terminologies that we have to uh, take care here. One is the operations and the next one is the phase. So if we are in the discrete manufacturing or when we are using the production orders, we talk about the terminology as operations, right? But when we use the process orders, we use the terminology as phase. So one example of this phase can be the blending operation, right? So the, the blending operation in a pharmaceutical industry is basically to mix all the components, I mean, all the raw materials and the APIs into a blender and then the blending operation is going to take place. Similarly, in the discrete manufacturing, an operation can be called as uh, an activity that you're going to perform by using these components. So let's say uh, the cutting operation or a milling operation, or it, it can be a drilling operation, operation that will be part of your uh, shop floor uh, execution process. So once the components have been consumed, we go with the uh, execution of the operation. So once the operation has been completed, the next step uh, to post in the system that uh, is the confirmation uh, activity. 
So by confirming the operation on the production order, it means that that particular operation has been completed on the shop floor. So if we have like 10 operations, so you, you have to confirm all the 10 operations, which basically tells the system that the production order has been completed. And the next step is basically to push the finished product or the semi-finished into the goods receipt uh, location. I mean to say it, it can be a production shop floor or it can be a, a QC location as well. So to make that happen, we have to perform the goods re receipt activity on the production order so that the finished product or the semi-finished that you have uh, intended to manufacture in the production order will be posted into the storage location. So depending on the quality inspection parameters, so let's say if you like to perform a quality check after the production has been completed, so the stock will be posted into the quality inspection stock. And if there is no quality check needed, then it can be directly posted into the unrestricted use. So once the stock has been posted, there is no further activity left over on the production order by the uh, shop floor team or the production supervisor, right? So he, ha he has performed all the uh, planned activities such as the consumption of components, confirmation of activities, and then the goods receipt. So now from the production point of view, in order to mark the production order or a process order as technically completed, which means that no further activities are pending from the shop floor perspective, we have to set the status as so TECO it basically stands for technically completed. So only when we make this status active in the production order, that's where the production order will be removed. Stock will be replenished as soon as the goods receipt has been posted. But if we do not mark the production order as TECO, it will still show with the status as delivered. So no one would be able to say whether of some kind of an open activity pending on this production order or not right so to make it clear we are going to mark the uh, status as techo on the production order so by marking the status as techo in the production order it will also indicate the costing department saying that the activities have been completed enough the production order can be taken into the settlement process so where the uh, costing team will basically perform the WIP calculations, they will do the result analysis and then they will settle the uh, production order with, to capture the actual cost incurred during the manufacturing process. So let's get into SAP and see how this works. Here we are in SAP uh, and let me go to the MD04 of the material. And from the MD04, I see that there is no demand for the material. We are just left with an open stock of uh, two pieces. Enough. Uh, if I run MRP for this material, there will be no proposals created. Why? Because there is no demand that uh, is open on this particular material. So to create a demand, like I said, we can create a safety stock or we can create a plan independent requirement or we can use a sales order. But for now, I'm going to create a planned independent requirement. So for that, I'm going to use the transaction MD61. And then my period will start from 31-5-2021 until 31-12-2021. So for the next uh, seven months. So these are my previous demands. So I can use it or maybe I can change it, something like this. Uh, but the reason why we do not see these uh, uh, plan independent requirements in MD04 is because the status is inactive, right? So the version 00 is inactive on this particular material code. So once I mark it as active and save it, the, the demand will be visible in MD04. Let me activate the demand here and just save it. Going back to MD04. So here we can see that the independent requirements have been created. So the next step is basically to run MRP. So I've added the MRP transactions in my favorites uh, for the MD02 transaction. So I'm just going to use that. Go back to M MD04, refresh the screen. And now we can see that the planned orders have been created. For now, I'm going to use uh, one planned order, uh, let's say that I just double click on the planned order and use this option to convert it in, into a production order. But what if there are multiple planned orders for the product and you would like to convert all of them into a production order? 
So I have again added the CO41 transaction into my favorites to convert the planned orders into production order for one material. So here my material is P-100 and then execute. So this is basically a mass transaction. So here we can see the complete list of uh, planned orders, right? So I just need to uh, select the planned order, which I would like to convert. I mean, if you like to use a mass functionality, you can just select all and then click on convert. But for now, I'm going to just convert one planned order here and click on this icon, the convert into the production order. So now we can see that the plan order has been converted into the production order 6005787 and that number can be seen over here in the order screen. So I'm going back, refresh MD04 and now we can see that this is my production order. So let me go into the production order and release it. So just double click the production order, go to the change mode and here I would like to check my components. Yeah, these are my components and these are actually intended for the uh, automatic goods issue where the backflash indicator has been enabled. But for now, I do not want to use the backflash indicator. I will just go with the standard uh, or the things. And then to the operation, right? So this is my operation that I have here. And there is a user status active to wait. So I'm going to change it to approved. APPR is there and now I am going to do a material availability check. So by clicking on this icon, this is basically a manual check on the materials availability. But you can set in the configuration like while creating the order, the material availability check should happen in the background or while releasing the production order system should make sure that all the raw materials or the components uh, are available in the stock. So you also can really uh, you also can restrict the release of the production order if there is no sufficient stock. So that depends on the uh, checking rules and check control uh, in the production order type. So now since my materials are available, my next step is basically to release the order. So once it, it has been released, I can see the status as REL activated in the production order. So I'm going to save it. and refresh the screen. So once it, it has been refreshed, so from the MD04 itself, you can see the status, uh, I mean, showing as RE, and just besides the production order number. So it, it means that the order has been released. So in the process flow, the next step is basically to consume the components, right? So let's do that. So for that, I just need to copy the production order and go to the transaction MIGO we go and choose the category as goods issue and the other category will be as order so a goods issue order and then paste the production order here so that will show me the complete list of components i would need uh, to manufacture the product so i just need to check all these components and do the posting okay and then post the goods issue so now we can see a material document has been created and this is basically for the 261 movement type or the consumption of the components in the production order so once the uh, the consumption has uh, happened i just need to go to the confirmation screen so assuming that the operations have been completed so i go to the transaction co 11 n and type and paste the production order. So here is my production order. Hit on enter so that the total yield that we have intended to manufacture in the production order. So this is basically the planned quantity of uh, 98 pieces. So I'm going to yield the complete uh, 98 pieces here and I'm going to mark this as a final confirmation so it means that the confirmation that i am posting here on this operation 10 is the final confirmation so so let's say there might be a few instances where uh, out of the 98 pieces you have just manufactured 50 pieces right in this particular shift so then you're going to 
confirm the operation as a partial confirmation right so once you choose the category as partial confirmation so then the activities that we have defined in the work center will be calculated based on the yield quantity so for the 50 pieces uh, the total labor time is uh, 8000 so on and if i change it to let's say 90 pieces you, you see this message right that the activities are recalculated due to change in the quantity and then click on continue now you can see that the labor hours have been changed to 15 hours so it is directly proportional to the total yield that we are posting here so now the confirmation has been so now the confirmation has been posted and the next step is basically to perform the goods receipt of the production order where we use the transaction MIGO again MIGO but here the category will be as goods receipt right goods receipt order we always need to choose order for the production order or the process order right order and then paste the production order number 5787 is my production order and here I'm going to yield the total 98 pieces and the stock type as you can see here like as soon as I post the uh, goods receipt the stock of 98 pieces will be moved on to the quality inspection stock right so the reason is that I have activated quality inspection for this product so I'm going to check the document is okay and then click on post now if I go back to MD04 of the finished product I can see that the stock is still lying in under the quality inspection but not the available stock right so the available stock is not yet increased so until unless I clear the quality inspection stock it cannot be moved on to the unrestricted use so let me also uh, do that I'm going to use a Q11 transaction I'll go with a direct uh, uh, usage decision ignoring my characteristics so accept so I'm going to move 98 pieces into my unrestricted use quality inspection if you feel that out of the 98 pieces three should be rejected or a rework should be uh, done on those three items so then you can choose the relevant categories where you can actually post those three re rejected stock if something that should be completely scrapped and it cannot be reworked so then you can directly post that stock into the rework here itself I'm going to post the complete quantity into the unrestricted use and the storage location is triple zero two and I'm going to start decision here and now the usage decision has been made so my expectation here from the MD04 is that the quality inspection lot should be cleared and the 98 pieces should be posted to the unrestricted use. So let me refresh MD04 and we can see that the 100 has been replenished in the plant stock. So this 100 will be consumed by the independent requirement that has been created for the month of May you can see the stock allegation right so 100 available and we also have a demand of 100 so that has been uh, consumed by the PIR and the next available stock is zero that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel also click on the bell icon to receive updates. We'll meet again soon in our next video. Until then, take care, stay safe, stay healthy. Bye -bye.